I think it's time to blow this thing. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jump. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. The clip you just saw is pretty much how it feels like to play a Blood Surge Necro. As you can see, both the sound and animation of Blood Surge is so satisfying and it never gets old. This is my second Necro character. My first Necro character was a summoner with a quite sort of stay in the back playstyle. So I wanted to try something different, something more in the face playstyle. So Blood Surge Necro was just the perfect one. So this video will guide you with the knowledge to level up smooth and fast. And it will also slowly prepare you towards the end game. And now while this guide is leaning towards Blood Surge, the leveling portion and various tips still applies even if you go Bloodlands or whatever Blood Necro variation you're going to build. I've babbled too much. Let's go straight into the guide. So we will be going through a lot of details, but throughout that all, there is one single thing that we will always be focusing on, and that is our overpower damage. This is pretty much what our entire build will be formed around. And what is overpower damage? Overpower damage is a type of damage that's entirely separate from all the other usual dam damage calculation that we have. See, usually we care about components or typical what what we are more familiar with, uh, buckets of damage. Overpower doesn't care about this. So things like vulnerable, right? Vulnerable is one of the, usually the biggest multiplier for our damage. Overpower doesn't care about this. Critical strike. Overpower doesn't care about critical strike. And then there's uh, the whole uh, array of damage versus categories. Overpower does not care about that. And there's a lot of other things, core skill damage and all sort of other damage modifier. Most of them just does not work with overpower. So unfortunately, the details of overpower itself as a mechanic is quite hidden and not well explained by the game. But to start with, all you need to care are the biggest factor that determines your overpower damage. First is any status that says you get additional overpower damage. So that's pretty straightforward. Second is your current health. So if you have a max health, uh, a big max health number that uh, allows you for a bigger potential overpower. Your current fortify also determines your overpower damage. And finally, your willpower status has some effect towards overpower. So. There's a lot more details on where we can get uh, more uh, more value for overpower, but we will worry about those details later. So the usual first question that people have is whether they should start with World Tier 1 or World Tier 2, since World Tier 2 gives uh, extra experience, right? I would say World Tier 1 is the way to go and the consensus at the moment seems like that's the better way because the mobs are weaker so you can clear faster and that that more than makes up for the extra experience that world trade uh, world tier 2 gives you you can try world tier 2 i think for our build especially it might not make that much of a difference as long as the most of the mobs still die in one shot that's our goal, right? That's how we usually clear the mobs, is by one-shotting them with our overpower damage. 
Next is what gear should I prioritize during this uh, leveling phase? My answer to this is actually don't worry about most things. Don't waste your time micromanaging gear, optimizing, and so on. All you care are these following stats. And you basically see, look at the new drop, see if it has overpower damage, maximum health, willpower. Get gears with the biggest value on those and just keep leveling up. Don't waste your time too much. You're gonna swap items very, very often at this uh, point of time. And there's really no point to optimize anything. Now, what's a good way for us to actually level up? I would say if you're going through the campaign, you're playing for the first time, just do the campaign, enjoy it. It, you'll, it will bring you to the level that you need to, and I say yeah, just enjoy it. However, if this is your second playthrough, you're making an alt character, I would say the best way is to do the grim favor task, especially the dungeon. So usually also on the way to the dungeon, there are the several grim favor tasks that's very easy, like collecting 100 souls, uh, find a corpse or something. Do all of those while still killing enemies while you head towards that dungeon that also give you grim favor points. And once you have 10, right, of course you go to the Tree of Whispers and that actually gives you uh, a substantial amount of, of experience. So that combined with the experience you directly get from killing monsters in the dungeon, I find that to be the fastest way to level up and my preferred way. So what's our gameplay rotation like? What do we actually do when we face enemies? It's actually super simple for our build. It's actually one of the simplest yet satisfying uh, out of many builds, I would say. Um, so for a big pack of mobs, it's simple. We spam blood surge until we get the overpower and it usually just one shots everything. And when you're low and uh, when you need to refill your essence, when there's a big pack, Iron Maiden, simple. Or Hemorrhage works too. Now how about single targets? Good thing about the leveling part of this build is that most even single target that's pretty beefy will still die from the blood surge overpower. So you can utilize the same uh, rotation. But if there's a, for some reason, a bigger target with even more HP, uh, if you have Bloodlands at that point, Bloodlands would be a more effective way to get overpower damage more often because it has lower essence cost. So you can, same thing, spam Bloodlands and then when you're out of essence, you spam Hemorrhage to regain those essence. So the biggest factor that determines how fast we can kill mobs and therefore level up is how well we manage our guaranteed overpower hits. Again, we have two ways of guaranteed overpower. After every 5 casts of Blood Surge, the next one will be a guaranteed overpower. And of course, another guaranteed overpower is from our passive skill, Rathmas Vigor. So making sure we always have one of them up when we start the battle, will make sure we have as little downtime as possible. So how do we actually pick our skills in the early game? So, um, yeah, I would just start with picking hemorrhage. Um, we might not use this yet, but we need two points. So let's get hemorrhage and enhance hemorrhage. Doesn't matter what it does. We'll worry about it later. Most importantly, we'll get blood search. We'll put one point there. Um, the rank of blood search doesn't actually affect our overpower damage. So... Uh, one rank is enough for now. Uh, let's go then pick Enhanced Blood Surge. This will heal us and it will keep us alive in the middle of many enemies. And then uh, most importantly, Paranormal Blood Surge, which gives us a guaranteed overpower after casting Blood Surge five times. So we cast Blood Surge five times and then the next one will overpower. Um... Okay, 
So next we want to actually get to Iron Maiden, but we need more points. So for now it's fine. We can just put a bunch of points in Blood Surge. At the early game, the base damage from Blood Surge actually has some impact. So we can put there and then we can actually get these two. Maximum Essence is okay. But imperfectly balanced. Interestingly, this does affect our overpower damage. So I would go get these. So actually, instead of uh, Blood Surge rank, I would just max this out. So our blood, sur blood Surge will cost more, but the overpower damage it outputs will be increased. So uh, this unlocks this section here. So of course, we want Iron Maiden. Let's put one there. This is super important. This will be our essence generator for the entire early game, if not even to mid and late game. So let's get that. And then we'll want the Iron Maiden. This will heal us, which is always great because our overpower damage depends on our current health. So we get this. Um, this is pretty much all we need because our rotation depends on Blood Surge and Iron Maiden, right? But how do we move to the next section here? I would just say let's finish our hemorrhage tree here. Let's get this one so we can fortify from hemorrhage. And overpower damage also depends on our current fortify level, so this is actually really good. Um, and then let's see. Yeah, it doesn't really matter too much. I would just like max this one out or just put a point. This unlocks the next section here, which is really crucial for uh, our Blood Necro. Let's get one point in Gruesome Mending. It increases healing when our life is below 50%, which is really nice. It allows us to get back to maximum life a lot faster. But more importantly is this one here, Qualicid Blood, blood. I don't know how to say that. Um, this will increase, it says blood skills deals uh, more percent increased damage, which does affect overpower damage from our blood skills. Uh, for example, yeah, blood surge. Um, so yeah, we want to put three points there. And this one is even better, it just straight out increase our overpower damage when we're healthy. So three points there. Um, we also want to get this one, Drain Vitality. It relies on Lucky Hits, which at this point we're probably not so great at generating Lucky Hits, but it's still nice to have the chance for our blood skills to fortify us. And we'll be spamming Blood Surge a lot, so I'm sure will always get some amount of fortify at least. So let's get that maxed out. Um, since there's not... Oh, actually, yeah. Now that we unlock this section here, um, we do want to get standalone. Damage reduction is always nice. Maybe not so much at the early game, but eventually this is a lot. Um, and then Memento Mori. This will increase the benefit we get from our sacrifices, uh, which I'll go over in a second. But yeah, our build, like the Blood Necro really relies heavily on sacrificing the minions. And all right, we have not unlocked the bottom part here. So let's put another point in Gruesome Mending that will unlock our uh, passive. And of course we want Wrathmas Vigor. It increases our max life and it gives us guaranteed overpower. That's what we want. So I think that's the core things you need. Aside from these things, um, feel free to pick whatever you want. Decrepify is nice. It gives you some crowd control and damage reduction. Uh, Bloodlands. I wouldn't say it's necessary, but it's nice when you're fighting like a boss or any strong single target. Um, 
You could also pick up Bone Storm, which give you some damage reduction. And if you have that aspect that uh, generates barrier from Bone Storm, uh, definitely you can pick up Bone Storm as well. But yeah, like I said, at this point, uh, don't worry about it too much. Because all we're going to do is Blood Surge and Iron Maiden, Blood Surge, Iron Maiden, and everything will just die. Uh, let's quickly look at our sacrifices here. So for Skeletal Warriors, we'll sacrifice the Defenders. Not the most exciting, but 15% on physical resistance is decent. Um, I'd say probably a bit better in the end game where there's a lot of elemental stuff, but 15% resistance is not the most exciting thing, but it's okay. Uh, we'll take it. Now moving on to Skeletal Mages, we want to sacrifice the Bone Skeletal Mages, and this one is huge. Um, because this will increase our overpower damage by 40%, and that's multiplicative, right? And that's, that's just a massive, massive boost. That really with this, the Memento Mori, which boosts our sacrifices bonus further, um, that's just a lot of value. And finally, our golem, you want to sacrifice the blood golem because that will give us uh, increase our max life. And max life is always good for surviving, but for blood necro, even better because it directly impacts our overpower damage. There's an argument towards the later game to sacrifice the bone golem because it gives us attack speed, which means like, if you spam blood blood search more quickly, you'll get to that over guaranteed overpower damage a lot faster. But this one is always a good option. Um, yeah, there you have it. Uh, that's I think is pretty much what you need for the early game. Now, finally, when should we do the capstone dungeon to move to world tier three? I would say you can start trying around level 45 or even earlier if you're confident, especially if this is an alt character and you have extra resources from your main character to invest in your alt, then yeah, you can do 45 or even lower. But if it's still difficult, I wouldn't worry about it. Just wait until you're level 50, you have more overpower damage gear that you need, but usually 45-ish, you should be fine. Alright, so you're level 45 or 50, you finished the capstone, and now you're in world tier 3. You're in the end game part. What should you do? First thing you want to do is start solidifying your gear a little bit. Not too much. You don't need to min-max every single thing and get the perfect affixes for all your gear yet. But you want a decent build. You want something solid so that you can do nightmare dungeons, you can start doing hell tides, and you want to be ready to do the next capstone so you can move over to world tier 4 where you can actually start nailing down the exact gear that you want or need. Alright, so what kind of gear should we be looking out for? Like I said, we don't need to get the perfect gear, but here's what I would go for. So what you want to aim for first is to get a one-handed weapons. And this is because one-handed weapons are faster and we really, like, attack speed is really important for us to get those guaranteed overpower hits with Blood Surge. So, yeah, get a one-handed weapon that has a good overpower damage affix on it. That's first. And where else can you get overpower damage? Uh, you can get them in gloves. So you want gloves with overpower damage. And then you also want your rings to have overpower damage here. And even better if they have maximum life as well. So as long as you can get these, I would say they're solid. And the next piece is more defensive. We want decent pants and decent chest armor with um, some maximum life. Maximum life gives us more defense, but at the same time for us, 
that also mean more overpower damage which is offense and I would say ideally you don't probably don't need both at, uh, at this point but get at least total armor or damage reduction on them because these are some of the best um, defensive status that you can get so yeah focus these you don't need all but the more you have of these I would say this will prepare you better to do hell tights and really prepares you to do the capstone as soon as possible to go to world tier 4. Now what about aspects? Um, because in world tier 3 you'll get more legendaries uh, and what aspects should you be looking out for? Um, at this point of time I would say you want to focus on these ones. First I would say is the sacrificial aspect. It will give it will boost up your sacrifices bonuses even further. Remember, we're really one of our big power boosts comes from sacrificing the uh, bone skeletal mage over here, which is um, increased even further by Memento Mori. And we can get even more uh, with sacrificial aspect. And this is the one I put. Uh, on the amulet, which will boost it, boost the effect by f uh, 50%. So, yeah, uh, definitely. If you find this, uh, that's great. And the next one you want is uh, aspect of Rathma Chosen. This makes it so when you overpower, you get a big, big attack speed boost for the next four seconds. So what can happen? With this is, let's say your blood surge overpower from its own ability, right? You get uh, one uh, free overpower every five casts. You trigger this, you get attack speed for four seconds. You can spam blood surge again. And this time you will reach five very quickly, right? Because of the attack speed. And then you, get, you can get another overpower. Um, next is aspect of potent blood. I don't think is the absolutely most crucial thing at this point, but as we go on, we will be relying more on blood orbs and there will be more and more blood orb synergy. Not only we can gain life, there's other things. We can get fortify and with this we can get essence. So having this as a source of essence is really helpful for us going through this world tier 3 phase. Uh, essence is always one of our primary bottlenecks, so this really helps uh, solve that problem. And finally, um, this goes probably with any other classes. It's one of the best defensive aspect aspect of disobedience. Works just out of the box for us because we spam our abilities. We will always deal a lot of uh, direct hits which makes stacking this up super easy. Yeah, it just, it will be at max charge most of the time, which ideally if you get a good roll, gives us 50% uh, increased armor, which is immense. And then I didn't mention earlier, but gems are pretty straightforward. These are most likely the ones you want for weapon, more overpower damage, pretty obvious. Armor, maximum life, again, more overpower damage and jewelry armor makes us uh, more beefy. Now what about the Paragon board? As soon as you hit level 50 this is something you will need to worry about but luckily for us it's pretty simple so let me walk you through it really fast. So at the beginning you move up uh, you move up in your starting board it's pretty simple you want to go just get the resistance to element path because the bonus percent damage does not affect our overpower damage so yeah we just move up we get to the first socket and then so our goal from here uh, is to actually go to the next board right and our goal is to get to a certain rare node but however since that will take a while to get to what we want to do at first before we can get there is we want to stick in a dominate glyph here um, 
which increases our overpower damage. And if you don't have this, uh, there's probably a magic glyph version for this. So just put that one in for now. And what you want to do is just because this scales with uh, for every with willpower. So every five willpower, it will increase the overpower damage bonus we get. I would just go pick up the willpower notes, whichever you can find that is within this glyph range. Now, once you have enough points, you want to get rid of those uh, willpower stuff because we don't really care about that. There's something more important that we want to do. We're going to go up, uh, pick up some armor here, and choose our next board. And this might surprise you, but the next, the, the immediate first board that we want is the Bone Graph board. I know, I know. We're not playing Bone Spear, but Bone Graph is the most important for us right now. Uh, the node that we're aiming for is the Reinvigorate Rare node and the surrounding magic node. These give us Essence on Kill. You cannot get the, this from anywhere else, not from skills, not from aspects. And as you probably have seen, our play pattern is spam our skills, kill a bunch of things really fast, and then somehow we need to try get back our essence. And getting essence on kill is just perfect. It's the perfect thing that we want, right? So. Combined together, we can get four essence uh, on kill. I think this one, this one, and there's this one. The maximum essence is nice too. Not super crucial, but it's nice. So yeah, as soon as you have uh, enough Paragon points to reach this area, you want to get rid of these willpower nodes that we mentioned earlier. That's uh, less important at the moment, and then you go straight for this area. And you will notice significantly in your play, it just it just makes such a great difference. Imagine if there's a pack of just let's, just, let's just say 10 mobs, you kill everything, that's 4 essence per kill. You immediately get 40 essence back. That's huge. So we mentioned all this paragon notes, levels, uh, aspects, and gears that we should prioritize at this point, but how do we get these and how do we level up at this point? I would say there's two primary ways, Helltide and Nightmare Dungeons. I would absolutely prioritize those two, especially, especially Helltide. I think that's the probably easiest way to get uh, to reliably get legendary gear and at this point you can start getting sacred level gear so definitely do hell tides um, nightmare dungeons are great too i think they it's not as reliable to get legendary gear uh, therefore it's not guaranteed that you get any aspects however they do provide you with uh, the chance to upgrade your glyph but the thing is at this point, you'll probably only be doing very low level Nightmare Dungeons, which means the experience, the glyph experience you will get is also very low, so it's not as crucial, but it's still nice. Um, so yeah, Helltide and Nightmare Dungeons. Prioritize Helltide. So now that we're in World Tier 3, we will be facing a lot tougher enemies, and so what tools can we add to our arsenal to clear them even faster and more efficiently and survive so first we are gonna add corpse tendril um, it will add some CC which is always always nice the base version it pulls in enemies stuns them and enhanced corpse tendril will slow them as well even better and just this alone is really nice because clumping all the enemies together makes them easier to AoE and even better it enables our Bloodlands, if we decided to pick Bloodlands, to also do AoE damage. Because when they're clumped up, it's easy to pierce the first target, which will go through hit the next one. 
but best of this is uh, Blighted Corpse Tendrils because this will give us a chance to get Blood Orb when damaging enemies and this is per enemy so uh, the more enemies the more Blood Orbs you can get in a single cast and Blood Orb as I said it will get more and more important uh, as part of our build because it provides just a lot of resources not just health with potent blood it can give us essence and with a certain paragon thing it will might give us fortify later on and next we're gonna also take the crevify it's a necromancer staple it's just so good it does too much uh yeah it provides us with some cc and reduce enemies damage we get to stun them and this is most important, important to crepify. We get lucky hit to get a chance to reduce all of our cooldowns by one second. And which cooldown are we aiming to reset? Is our corpse tendril, of course, because that way more CC, more blood orbs, rinse and repeat. Now, what does our rotation look like with all of this? So let's add these new extra skills. We have our Decrepify. We have our Corpse Tendrils. Um, and this is not absolutely necessary at this point, I would say, but uh, my choice is to add Bloodlands as well. So our rotations for regular mobs, I would say it's still the same. You go spam blood search, Iron Maiden to get essence out of them, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. For most mobs, these two together will just work. If it's a tougher pack, right, they have more HP, maybe there's some elites, we want to add the, our new addition, Corpse Tendril and Decrepify. So as soon as we have a corpse on the ground, usually when you cast Blood Search, there's something that dies, like a small spider or a hound or something will die. Immediately cast Corpse Tendril. This will pull everything in and yeah, it will start giving us Blood Orbs, which is great. And depending whether we'll need to cast Corpse Tendrils or not, we might want to cast Decrepify right after. The goal of casting Decrepify at this point is mostly so that when we spam Blood Search, we have, again, a chance to reset Corpus Tendril's cooldown as fast as possible. Now, if you already have Potent Blood at this point, which I mentioned earlier is one of our very crucial aspects for us to regenerate Essence, um, yeah, if there are five blood orbs, you get five times whatever it is uh, between 10 to 20 essence, right? Which you'll have always have the potential to just uh, refill your essence to max. Now, the trickiest part with blood search necro is always um, very strong single target like bosses or very strong like only one or two elite mobs. I would... In this situation, I would consider using Bloodlands instead. Why? Because you will get a lot more overpower hits in the long run compared to Blood Surge. Because Bloodlands costs cheaper. The base cost of Bloodlands is 15, while Blood Surge is twice as that. So even though we only get Bloodlands... Uh, every six or seven hit we get an over uh, guaranteed overpower compared to the five of blood search because oftentimes our bottleneck is the essence especially at this point of time we will just get a lot more overpower hits with bloodlands and also if there's only one to two three or four mobs it's usually not a problem at all to affect them all with bloodlands because bloodlands can pierce right if we take Let's see, Bloodlands, yeah, Enhanced Bloodlands pierces through enemies who are currently lands. So if uh, you hit one, you get pe uh, you get lands, then you hit them again, the Bloodlands will go through, hit the enemies behind it. So with all of this, 
setup, I was able to do world tier 4 capstone at level 57. I did die a few times when fighting Elias, the final boss, which is one of the most fun fights actually because it's not just clearing mobs, which is always fun, but it actually feels like a challenging uh, fight that I really need to focus on, a lot of dodging and stuff. But yeah, I was really happy that I was able to do it at level 57 because I think the mobs are mostly level 70 and that's a huge gap. But yeah, I think it's very doable with this build and it will get us quicker to World Tier 4. So we finally reach the end. I really hope this will help you both level up and build your bloodiest blood necromancer. I was actually considering covering my final end game build as well, but looking how this already goes over the 30 minute mark, I'll have my end game build guide be a separate video. So definitely stay tuned for that. With that, Thank you so much for watching and if this is in any way helpful at all, please leave a like and subscribe. Happy blood surging.